Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and I'm the host of All About Canadian Books. This week's writer's tip and author reading will be from author Lucy E.M. Black. Lucy will be releasing a new novel. It's her third, Stella's Carpet, and it will be out in the world October 16th. So Lucy, what advice do you have for writers today? Um, I think for me, uh, it's really important to separate the pre-writing process from the writing process mm. and the writing process from the editing process. And I've had the opportunity to teach a couple of writing workshops. And, and what I've observed is some people try to do it all at once. Mm. And I think they, they get overwhelmed. So for me, I like to sort of break it into those three distinct chunks. So when I talk about pre-writing, I'm, I'm talking about pre-thinking and the things that we do before we sit down to actually write the story. So things like being observant, being an eavesdropper, I think is really important. <laughs> Being, being curious, um, doing research, background research, making sure that, that you understand what it is that, that you're talking about, um, and beginning to think about your characters, um, who they are, when they were born, what they wear, what they like to eat, um, you know, naming them, and I think naming them is so important. So all of that pre-thinking, pre-writing, I think has to be very separate from the writing process. Yeah. And then the writing process itself, when, when all of that information has been um, something that you've been mulling around for a while um, in simmering in the background, the, the writing process becomes a very creative opportunity to just get the story down mm -hmm. and to listen to the characters because you've envisioned these people and they've become three-dimensional and it's important to listen to them and to let them take the story where it needs to go mm -hmm. and I find the more time I spend in that pre-thinking and the pre-writing stage um, the more easily that that part of the writing flows Okay. So once the, the, the creative part is down and the story is down and the writing is down, comes the next stage. And, and that's the dreaded stage <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the long, hard part, which is the yeah. editing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, you have to keep going back into the story and, and checking things structurally like the narrative arc. And whether you've got off course or you're remaining true to the heart of the story. And then when you've done those things, focusing on polishing your writing and, and your language and fine tuning things. And for me, one of the last things that, that I do on one of my last drafts of, of writing is a character edit where I will use the find and replace feature on the computer okay. and I'll go through the manuscript just looking for one character to make sure that everything I have described about them and their speech, their lexicon is consistent throughout. And so, you know, doing a really detailed character edit of the manuscript as well. And then finally reading it aloud and, um, feeling the words in, in your mouth and whether or not it, it flows well once you've finished. So I, I think there are those three distinct stages and I, they're all equally important, but I think it's important to me for my process anyway, to keep them separate. So that would be my writing tip. <laughs> that's a, that's a good that's a fabulous writing tip I you can you can see the educator and you come out as you're giving your tip <laughs> <laughs> now but you've also got me curious that pre-writing time when you spend you know so much time with your characters too where did Stella's name come from Oh, <laughs> well, I use name books, you know, these baby name books where they yes. tell you that the, the history of the book. 
Um, so in part, I mean, Stella means star. Yeah. And she is the star of the story, just as her carpet has stars in it. Yeah. Um, but it's also a nod to Charles Dickens, who I love. Oh. And you'll remember he wrote a, a very um, quirky character called Estella in mm. Great Expectations. Oh. And she was a very elusive, quirky character. And people hated her <laughs> and actually made Dickens rewrite the ending to Great Expectations so that the there was a happy ending for Pip with Estella because they so disliked sort of the lack of, of resolution or closure with her character. And I thought that my Stella was a little like that. She was just a little quirky and a little unfinished and people might not like her all that well. So I liked her, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad. <laughs> I liked her a lot. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. And I'd I was afraid have, people wouldn't. <laughs> no, I liked her. And I'd actually really like to have her carpet as well on my floor of my house. <laughs> um, and you have kindly agreed to read an excerpt from Stella's Carpet today. And I'd love to know, Lucy, before you start, why you've chosen this particular passage to read. Okay. Um, the passage I chose was William. And William is Stella's father. And um, he boarded with the Pinskys when he was a dental student um, in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And he loved carpets. And carpets are really um, an important part of this story. Mm -hmm. And so I thought um, I'd share a little bit about the first carpet and why it mattered to William. Yeah. So if it's okay, I will just read about William. Yes. and um, his first carpet. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay. It was hard to say when his interest in carpets really began. He'd grown up in a big house with Axe Minster carpets, but hadn't really appreciated them. They were part of the landscape of his family home, a small detail in the changes wrought by decorators. His own room, for instance, had been completely redone while he was at camp one summer. In a conscious act of rebellion, he accidentally burned a cigarette hole in the bedspread. And he inadvertently pulled the drapes too hard and ripped a panel. He left dirty socks and underwear strewn on the floor and under the bed. He dumped things on the wooden desk and scratched the lacquered finish. But no matter how subversive he was, the room healed itself. A replica bedspread appeared. The drapery panel was sent out for repair. A large blotter appeared on the desk. Socks and underwear disappeared into the laundry. And there was no admonishment. There was simply the inevitable return to the military order of a green and brown striped room. His landlords, the Lipinskis, had a worn Persian carpet in their living room. The fibers had been trodden down and there were patches where the grid of underlying threads was exposed, but the richness of the colors prevailed. Despite its age and condition, the rug filled the room with a vibrant energy. Wine and sapphire and mustard were intricately woven in combinations of diamonds and medallions floating in the sea of color. Its otherness intrigued him. It spoke to him of worlds he did not know. Oh, <laughs> I just love it. Lucy, thank you so much for the fabulous reading and also writing tip. I've so enjoyed having you on the show today. And our viewers, if you have missed our um, Lucy and my behind the book interview, I'll also put a link down below because you don't want to miss that interview. There will also be links down below so you can go to Lucy's website, 
see more carpet information, and also pre-order a copy of Stella's Carpet. Lucy, thank you so much. Thank you, Crystal, and thank you for everything you're doing to promote Canadian writing. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. I love it. It's a great gift to get to um, speak with writers such as yourself about their books, learn the stories behind them, and it's my pleasure. And to our viewers, thank you for watching. Thanks so much, Crystal. Thanks, Bye. Lucy. Bye.